Good morning, everybody. This is a live severe weather briefing with a recap on yesterday's tornado event and why there were not more tornadoes in central and southern Tennessee along that warm frontal zone where the surface low was tracking. In the upper left here, you can see a supercell that was to the west of Hackleburg, Alabama, that was a little bit stretched out because those low-level winds were quite veered. There was only the one tornado report yesterday near Tishomingo, Mississippi, and that moved through the Tish Tishomingo State Park area, lofting trees into the air, doing so quite a bit of damage to to the town of Tishomingo, but as you can see, there is a complete lack of tornadoes in the Tennessee target area, with really that one lone tornado in northeastern Mississippi. And here is the wrap analysis just before those storms were getting going. You can see a couple different modes, one in northeastern Mississippi, some renegade cells that were a little bit elevated above the level of free convection. You can see that max, though, in central and southern Tennessee of three to 400 meters squared per second squared, low-level helicity. That's where you'd expect to target. That's where you'd expect to find the larger uh, tornadoes. However, there was also a lobe of wind shear that extended off to the south, as you can see, into northeastern Mississippi. And that is the area that eventually did have uh, that, that, that only lone tornado. And uh, that was a lobe of, uh, of enhanced helicity that extended just a little bit south of that surface low track. The surface low going through central Tennessee there. Normally, once the surface low ejects to the northeast, those low-level winds get more veered or more of a westerly component. And uh, that becomes unidirectional. It stretches out the hodograph and reduces the tornado threat. But this storm that eventually evolved in northeastern Mississippi had just enough low-level shear to still squeeze out uh, a brief tornado, and it was just a lone tornado at that. Here were my three target areas that were playing out uh, in real time uh, with this event. Uh, this is that elevated uh, early, early convection there in northeastern Mississippi that I was talking about. And this ended up being the saving grace uh, for the Tennessee target area. This is a mesoscale accident, so it's very thankful that these storms did develop. But these were the renegades here in the Florence area. I initially uh, went down there to scope those out, but they were clearly elevated above the LFC. But then this storm rapidly intensified near the the savannah area this was becoming surface based it was ahead of the surface low it was in that zone of three to four hundred meters squared per second squared helicity and so i went north into the lawrenceburg area that storm was tornado warned but these storms that out ahead of the front ended up lifting off to the north they were a little bit more shallow uh, they lift, had a more meridional component, and they impeded the inflow of the storm in Tennessee and prevented it from producing those strong tornadoes. The third target, tertiary target that I had, was back here in northeastern Mississippi to the west of Boonville. That was a surface-based storm. It was out ahead of this messier convection along the front. You could tell it was going to be a surface-based supercell, but I still thought that the wind shear behind this ejecting surface low would veer out the low-level flow and create hodographs that were unfavorable for a robust tornado threat. But it was just close enough to that surface low to squeeze out a tornado in the Tishomingo State Park area. But those are my three target areas as I was... Uh, uh, in real time chasing this event. But now look at the VAD. This is from the Columbus radar site. You can see some substantial wind shear uh, in the low levels there with a 30 knot low level jet. Still you didn't have that 40 to 50 knot low level jet more back that was being forecast by some of the models out in this area. But still you had quite a curved photograph, strong winds at the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere to evacuate that rain and the hail from the updraft. But you can see that these are largely veered uh, low level winds but just backed enough to squeeze out that tornado threat in northeastern Mississippi. So even though the photographs likely looks more like this up into uh, central Tennessee, extending up to the 40 knots of low-level flow with a bit more curvature and a lot more area underneath that photograph curve, those storms were unable to be surface-based because the inflow was impeded by those renegade storms that developed out ahead of it. Here is the tornado watch that was issued by the Storm Prediction Center from northeastern Mississippi into central and southern Tennessee, northern uh, Alabama as well. And it covered mainly the surface low track. I was targeting largely the northern portion of this watch across Tennessee because of the enhanced storm relative helicity up there with the more backed low level winds. And after uh, sampling that storm in Mississippi, I did drop back south to the south of uh, Muscle Shoals near the Littleville area, and I was in position on that storm. This was the, the, the new mesocyclone after emerging from Tishomingo. Uh, the uh, occluded circulation was lifting off to the north toward the Cherokee area, and I was in position to this storm. But it just weakened. It was a very disorganized on approach to the Littleville area, and that is because those low-level winds were largely veered as that surface low ejected off to the northeast. That created unfavorable streamwise vorticity and not an, uh, a long enough 
shear vector as well to compensate for those negatives. Here is the overall pattern. It was a zonal flow set up once again, but you could see that subtle wave with a jet streak as well. The jet streak was punching across northern uh, Mississippi and Alabama just to the south of that surface low and that brought the left exit region over central and southern Mississippi that created a vacuum cleaner above that led to surface pressure falls in that surface low that migrated across Tennessee to the south of the I-40 corridor that's why I was targeting that storm and I believed that every storm to the southwest of that one would have wind shear that was just too veered at the low levels to produce a tornado but that Tishomingo one did squeeze out a tornado and and largely it was because of the 850 flow this is the three kilometer nam initialized uh this is at about zero z uh yesterday and you can see an enhancement in that uh, low level jet in northeastern mississippi there that likely elongated the shear vector just enough to squeeze out that tornado but you can see a more backed low level jet in northern alabama into southern tennessee ahead of that surface low that was why those uh uh, zero to one kilometer effective helicities were so great feeding into that storm in the Lawrenceburg area but even though the winds the low-level winds were largely veered just to the southwest of that surface low the storm near Tishomingo was just close enough to that surface low to still eke out a tornado threat here was that warm front the elevated mixed layer was coming in from the southwest across northern Mississippi and eastern Arkansas that's why the clouds were clearing out so dramatically along that warm front however the low-level winds were veered just enough to not surge this warm front northward into uh, central Tennessee that would have brought the tornado threat back up uh, toward uh, Nashville as well you could see the waviness that were depicted by the models with this warm front uh, so it definitely was picking up on these early storms uh, impeding with it and some rain cooled air uneven uh, rainfall rates to the north of the warm front created that waviness in it as well and you could see a you could see the a surge in that instability just ahead of the surface low as well this is at about zero z so the surface low was moving through tennessee at this point with that more back low level jet uh, causing a ripple effect in that that warm front uh, but that, those early storms that developed in northeastern Mississippi, those renegades ended up impeding the inflow to that storm. Here you can see the storm relative helicity maximized across uh, just ahead of that surface low. You can see that it was maximized uh, in central Tennessee there, 0 to 1 kilometer helicities of 3 to 400. But you also had those stronger 0 to 1 helicities lagging back into northeastern Mississippi. This is where that tornado happened, and that's because of that 40 knot low level jet. Even though it was quite veered, it elongated the hodographs just enough to squeeze out 2 to 300 helicity in this lobe into northeastern Mississippi. But you could see the greater helicity was definitely in central Tennessee, feeding into that Lawrenceburg storm out ahead of the surface low but the thermodynamics due to a mesoscale accident did not line up thankfully for that area up there in Tennessee overall though the tornado threat was definitely there between 4 and 9 p.m. across southern Tennessee northern Mississippi northern Alabama I even lagged it back a little bit into eastern Arkansas to account for that veered out shear profile still having some non-zero helicity and a chance for a tornado or two you can also see the cold air wedge that was in the southern Appalachians there were tornado warnings that were approaching to the west of Chattanooga but they ran into that cold air wedge thankfully Chattanooga did not have a tornado threat uh, last night as those storms weakened as they moved into the stable air looking at, out in advance uh, there's going to be an active pattern there's a slight risk on Friday right now across parts of the southern plains then that system ejects across the central US portions of the Midwest Ohio River Valley northern Dixie on Saturday as a big mid-latitude cyclone ejects so chase mode continues I'm gonna head back toward the west toward the Great Plains and position for this late week setup uh, but this was an interesting complex setup for such a simple zonal flow uh, pattern a lot of mesoscale accidents will get involved with these systems and you really have to look for that unimpeded inflow and those favorable hodographs ejecting shear uh, to really forecast these properly uh, but you know if i if i continue to chase uh, veered out shear lagging behind a surface low more times than not i'm going to miss uh, that tornado but thankfully those storms impeded the inflow and tennessee definitely dodged a bullet with this one not the case for Tishomingo with damage, including there at the do Dollar General. So everybody, stay safe. Stay tuned to those watches and warnings. Stay physically isolated. Be well and dominate the storm.